Ancient voices from the dust plead with us today. Do you see what is happening right before our eyes? Now is the time for you and for me to prepare for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I pray that we will not miss the majesty of this moment. Now is the time for us to make our discipleship our highest priority. Brothers and sisters, the Lord will comfort you too. He will strengthen you. He will bless you with peace, even amidst chaos. I will be on your right hand and on your left, and my spirit shall be in your hearts, and mine angels round about you to bear you up. There is no limit to the Savior's capacity to help you. Mormon 5. Mormon again leads the Nephite armies in battles of blood and carnage. The Book of Mormon will come forth to convince all Israel that Jesus is the Christ. Because of their unbelief, the Lamanites will be scattered and the Spirit will cease to strive with them. They will receive the gospel from the Gentiles in the latter days. Now, about A.D. 375 to 384. And it came to pass that I did go forth among the Nephites and did repent of the oath which I had made that I would no more assist them. And they gave me command again of their armies, for they looked upon me as though I could deliver them from their afflictions. But behold, I was without hope, for I knew the judgments of the Lord which should come upon them. For they repented not of their iniquities, but did struggle for their lives without calling upon that being who created them. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did come against us as we had fled to the city of Jordan. But behold, they were driven back that they did not take the city at that time. And it came to pass that they came against us again, and we did maintain the city, and there were also other cities which were maintained by the Nephites, which strongholds did cut them off that they could not get into the country which lay before us to destroy the inhabitants of our land. But it came to pass that whatsoever lands we had passed by, and the inhabitants thereof were not gathered in, were destroyed by the Lamanites, and their towns and villages and cities were burned with fire, and thus three hundred and seventy and nine years passed away. And it came to pass that in the three hundred and eightieth year the Lamanites did come against, against us to battle, and we did stand against them boldly. But it was all in vain, for so great were their numbers that they did tread the people of the Nephites under their feet. And it came to pass that we did again take to flight. And those whose flight were swifter than the Lamanites did escape, and those whose flight did not exceed the Lamanites were swept down and destroyed. And now behold, I, Mormon, do not desire to harrow up the souls of men in casting before them such an awful scene of blood and carnage as was laid before mine eyes. But I, knowing that these things must surely be made known, and that all things which are hid must be revealed upon the housetops, and also that a knowledge of these things must come upon and also that a knowledge of these things must come unto the remnant of these people and also unto the gentiles who the lord hath said should scatter this people and this people should be counted as not among them therefore i write a small abridgment daring not to give a full account of the things which i have seen because of the commandment which i have received and also that ye might not have too great sorrow because of the wickedness of this people. And now behold, this I speak unto their seed, and also to the Gentiles who have care for the house of Israel, that realize and know from whence their blessings come. So real quick, um, Elder Bednar talked about Mormon and how he compiled all of these records because he saw our day. And he quoted President Benson, which I loved so much, in saying that the Nephites never had the Book of Mormon. The Lamanites didn't have the Book of Mormon in its entirety. Um, but we do. And Mormon, after seeing our day, was led by the Spirit, based off what he saw and what he, he was instructed to do, to include everything that we have in this 531-page book. These are not things that are happenstance. They are all things 
that are meant to be in here. And in verse 8, when Mormon says, I'm not trying to be awful to have you guys read this. He says, I do not desire to harrow up the souls of men in casting before them such an awful scene of blood and carnage. So he's saying, I don't want to do this, but I need to do this. I can just feel his, his compassion and his sorrow in having to do this, having to share these things. And now behold, this I speak unto their seed and also to the Gentiles who have care for the house of Israel that realize and know from whence their blessings come. For I know that such will sorrow for the calamity of the house of Israel. Yea, they will sorrow for the destruction of this people. They will sorrow that, that this people have not repented, that they might have been clasped in the arms of Jesus. Oh, isn't that word beautiful? Clasped in the arms of Jesus. Now these things are written unto the remnant of the house of Jacob, and they are written after this manner, because it is known of God that wickedness will not bring them forth unto them. And they are to be hid up unto the Lord, that they may come forth in his own due time. What a mercy that that's exactly what happened. And this is the commandment which I have received. And behold, they shall come forth according to the commandment of the Lord, when he shall see fit in his wisdom. And behold, they shall go unto the unbelieving of the Jews. And for this intent shall they go, that they may be persuaded that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, that the Father may bring about through his most beloved, his great and eternal purpose in restoring the Jews or all the house of Israel to the land of their inheritance, which the Lord their God hath given them unto the fulfilling of his covenant. And also that the seed of this people may more fully believe this gospel, which shall go forth unto them from the Gentiles, for this people shall be scattered and shall become a dark, a filthy, and a loathsome people beyond the description of that which ha ever hath been amongst us, yea, even that which hath been among the Lamanites, and this because of their unbelief and idolatry. For behold, the Spirit of the Lord hath already ceased to strive with their fathers, and they are without Christ and God in the world, and they are driven about as chaff before the wind. They were once a delightsome people, and they had Christ for their shepherd, Yea, they were led even by God the Father. But now, behold, they are led about by Satan, even as chaff is driven before the wind, or as a vessel is, is tossed about upon the waters, without sail or anchor, or without anything wherewith to steer her. And even as she is, so are they. And behold, the Lord hath reserved their blessings, which they might have received in the land, for the Gentiles who shall possess the land, but behold, it shall come to pass that they shall be driven and scattered by the Gentiles. And after they have been driven and scattered by the Gentiles, behold, then will the Lord remember the covenant which he made unto Abraham and unto all the house of Israel. And also the Lord will remember the prayers of the righteous, which have been put up unto him for them. Can you feel the foreshadowing? Can you feel the fulfillment of prophecy? Exactly what we are going through now in our day right now is exactly what Mormon is writing about in this chapter. And the Lord's saying that he hears the prayers of the righteous. And then, O ye Gentiles, how can you stand before the power of God, except ye shall repent and turn from your evil ways? Know ye not that ye are in the hands of God? Know ye not that he hath all power, and at his great command, the earth shall be rolled together as a scroll. Therefore, repent ye and humble yourselves before him, lest he shall come out in justice against you, lest a remnant of the seed of Jacob shall go forth among you as a lion and tear you to pieces, and there is none to deliver. I can feel Mormon's angst. I can feel his love for us. I can feel the sorrow and the regret maybe that he felt having to write so strongly and give us such harsh warnings that this is real. This is now. This is real. This is the time where we 
are being called upon to stand up and defend Jesus Christ, to defend his church, defend his gospel, to stand for truth, to speak truth, regardless of the consequence. Do what is right, let the consequence follow. There is not any truth but the Lord's truth. All truth comes from him. We don't make our own truth. We need to stand up and defend him and defend actual truth. All truth comes from God. All truth comes from God. But you also have been reserved to be here now. When the Lord knows you can do that. You've done it before. You've proven yourself before. And he needs you to do it again now. Mormon chapter 6. The Nephites gather to the land of Cumorah for the final battles. Mormon hides the sacred records in the hill Cumorah. The Lamanites are victorious and the Nephite nation is destroyed. Hundreds of thousands are slain with the sword. About 80, 385, hundreds of thousands. And now I finish my record concerning the destruction of my people, the Nephites. And it came to pass that we did march forth before the Lamanites. And I, Mormon, wrote an epistle unto the king of the Lamanites, and desired of him that he would grant unto us that we might gather together our people unto the land of Cumorah by a hill which was called Cumorah, and there we could give them battle. And it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites did grant unto me the thing which I desired. And it came to pass that we did march forth to the land of Cumorah, and we did pitch our tents around about the hill Cumorah. And it was in the land of many waters, rivers, and fountains, and here we had hoped to gain advantage over the Lamanites. And when three hundred and eighty and four years had passed away, we had gathered in all the remainder of our people unto the land of Cumorah. And it came to pass that when we had gathered in all our people in one to the land of Cumorah, behold, I, Mormon, began to be old. And knowing it to be the last struggle of my people, and having been commanded of the Lord that I should not suffer the records which had been handed down by our fathers, which were sacred, to fall into the hands of the Lamanites, for the Lamanites would destroy them. Therefore I made this record out of the plates of Nephi, and hid up in the hill Cumorah all the records which had been entrusted to me by the hand of the Lord, save it were these few plates which I gave unto my son Moroni. It's just so amazing to know Joseph. I mean, that's our dispensation. Joseph Smith got these plates from where Mormon deposited them, where he was told by the Lord where to put them. It is just so beautiful. Oh, how great the plan of our God that he was able to have these plates buried and protected. It just... I am constantly amazed by his mercy towards us. And it came to pass that my people with their wives and their children did now behold the armies of the Lamanites marching towards them. And with that awful fear of death, which fills the breasts of all the wicked, did they await to receive them. It's not just that his people are being slaughtered. It's that his people are wicked. That's what hurts Moroni the most. The Book of Mormon is full of stories of people who have lost their lives that were righteous people. And it's not filled with sorrow. You don't have the prophet at the time talking about how sad he is and how much his heart just hurts. That's not how they see it. They see it as a progression, as walking into the next room, as growing and becoming and progressing with the Lord. The sorrow comes when they're wicked, when they choose to turn away from the Lord and fight with the strength in the arm of man, trust in the arm of flesh, not trusting in the Lord. Then they're alone. Then that's where the sorrow comes. And it came to pass that they came to battle against us and every soul was filled with terror because of the greatness of their numbers. Remember, we've read about battles and all sorts of wars where the people saw the Lamanites coming and they fell to the earth and the Lamanites thought, ah, oh, they're afraid of us. This is perfect. And then I love the Book of Mormon says, but in this thing, they were disappointed. I love that. They were not afraid of them. 
when we have the Lord's Spirit completely filling every ounce of our souls and we choose, we choose it, we choose Him, then we don't feel fear. It doesn't just happen. It has to be a choice. But we can't make that choice unless we know the Lord and we know that He knows us. And then we can rely on Him and not have the fear, not have the worry. Again, Mormon was so sad because they were wicked. And because they were wicked, they were filled with fear and terror. And it came to pass that they did fall upon my people with the sword and with the bow and with the arrow and with the axe and with all manner of weapons of war. And remember, these are families. These are women and children and their men. And it came to pass that my men were hewn down, they, even my 10,000 who were with me. And I fell wounded in the midst, and they passed by me that they did not put an end to my life. So there's a miracle for us that they didn't kill Mormon at that time. The Lord wasn't done with his mission. Mormon wasn't done with his earthly mission. That's what it all comes down to. And when they had gone through and hewn down all my people, save it were twenty and four of us, among whom was my son Moroni. And we, having survived the dead of our people, did behold on the morrow, when the Lamanites had returned unto their camps from the top of the hill Cumorah, the ten thousand of my people who were hewn down, ten thousand people were murdered. Their bodies just all throughout the land. And only 24 are left. And we also beheld the 10,000 of my people who were led by my son Moroni. And behold, the 10,000 of Gidgadona had fallen, and he also in the midst. So it's not just the 10,000, it's 10,000 of Moroni's people, 10,000 of Gidgadona's people. And Lama had fallen with his 10,000, 10,000 more. And Gilgal had fallen with his 10,000. And Lim, Limha had fallen with his 10,000. And Jinnium had fallen with his 10,000. And Kumanaiha and Moronaiha and Antionum and Shiblon, Shiblam and Shem and Josh had fallen with their 10,000 each. This is the most horrifying thing to imagine. And the fact that Mormon is able to write this and he's not just completely overcome with sorrow shows you that he was being buoyed up by the Lord. He had the strength of the Lord with him. And it came to pass that there were 10 more who did fall by the sword with their 10,000 each. My word. He even all my people, save it were those 20 and 4 who were with me, and also a few who had escaped into the south countries, and a few who had deserted over unto the Lamanites had fallen, and their flesh and bones and blood lay upon the face of the earth, being left by the hands of those who slew them to molder upon the, upon the land and to crumble and to return to their mother earth. And my soul was rent with anguish because of the slain of my people, and I cried, O oh, ye fair ones, how could ye have departed from the ways of the Lord? O oh, ye fair ones, how could ye have rejected that Jesus who stood with open arms to receive you? This is overwhelming me because I feel like we are really close to this exact same scene again. Where our prophet stands and says, O oh, ye fair ones, I told you he was coming, I warned you. I told you to repent. I told you to turn away from wickedness. Return back to the Lord. Turn back to him who's standing with open arms to receive you. Behold, if ye had not done this, ye would not have fallen. But behold, ye are fallen, and I mourn your loss. O oh, ye fair ones, O oh, ye fair sons and daughters, Ye fathers and mothers, ye husbands and wives, ye fair ones, how is it that ye could have fallen? But behold, ye are gone, and my sorrows cannot bring your return. And the day soon cometh that your mortal must put on immortality, 
And these bodies, which are now moldering in corruption, must soon become incorruptible bodies. And then you must stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged according to your works. And if it so be that ye are righteous, then are ye blessed with your fathers who have gone before you. So he's testifying here that everybody will be resurrected. Everybody will stand before Christ and be judged of our works. President Nelson has actually focused on that a lot in the last few years, probably the last three years. He's really driven that point home. We will all die. We will all be resurrected. We will all be judged. And we will all go to whichever kingdom we are most comfortable is really what it comes down to. It depends on your ability to handle light. And it also depends on your ability to become that light, that you're able to withstand the light that is going to be present in that kingdom. We all will go to the place where we are most comfortable. And that really is a mercy too. But I will tell you right now, I am not satisfied with anything less than celestial glory. With Heavenly Father, with my Savior, with my eternal family and all of those who were added to that family. It's going to be amazing. There's so much that we don't understand in our, in our limited views here. But the Lord's ways are not our ways. But we know enough to know that we want to strive for the celestial kingdom, for the highest degree of glory. Oh, that ye had repented before this great destruction had come upon you. But behold, ye are gone. And the Father, yea, the eternal Father of heaven, knoweth your state, and he doeth with you according to his justice and mercy. You guys, we cannot let that scene happen again. What we can control is ourselves. So let's do everything in our power not to be among the fallen fair ones that Mormon is mourning because they were not repentant, because they have fallen into the ways of the world and they fought unto their own strength and ultimately failed and died horrifically. Really sad, sad, sorrowful deaths that Mormon is just terrified that they lost their chance to repent. I can just feel Mormon's heart grieving these people. And he even says, my sorrow will not bring them back. It's like he's talking himself through this. Like, I'm so sad, but I have to be able to get up and move on. I can't do anything about this now. I tried. I tried with everything in me and he didn't listen and I can't fix it. My heart breaks for Mormon. Mormon. 